Well, as a journalist, she has covered many of the most brutal and shocking murders over the last decade. Now, in her new book, Behind Bars, we get to find out what it's really like to live life in jail. Some of them are the country's most violent and dangerous criminals. And to tell us more about this, please welcome to the cafe author Annalise. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Welcome, Anna. Great to have you here. Um, so, in this book, you have talked to a whole lot of different people who have spent life behind bars. Was it difficult to get them on board for it? Yeah, a lot of people said no, they weren't interested in talking about it, but the people that we did get on board were really open. They um, had a lot of stories to share and um, some of them have been to prison more than once, so they had um, a lot to talk about. What was the main motivation for putting the book out? Was it about understanding what a prisoner goes through or was it about understanding what leads them there? I think a little bit of both. I don't think most of us know or understand fully what it's like to be in prison, what gets a person there, you know, we all sit there and say, oh, it's a holiday camp and we think we know about it, but, you know, talking to these people and hearing their stories about, you know, living day to day in prison and what they go through and how they cope, um, that's just what we wanted to sort of get out there. Did you ever start to feel sorry for them? It's a good question. Um, no, I don't feel sorry for them. I mean, I'm a firm believer that if you do the crime, you do the time, but I, I do have a better understanding and a bit more empathy of what it's like to... Um, you've been in prison and how, you're leaving your family on the outside and you know it is a punishment but it's mm. still hard. Mm. How did you go about doing the interviews? Well, did you just sit down with them at one go? Are these people? How many people do you have in the book? Um, there's about 10 people that we've sort of mm. focused on and um, a lot of them were face-to-face -face interviews so we sat down and just talked as long as they wanted to talk. Um, a few of them we you know I spent months going back and forth and um, sort of picking at their brain and, you know, was it more and more. Was it difficult to get the stories out of them or was it like once you once you started it was like a floodgate open up? Yeah, it was like a floodgate. Um, some of them, you sort of start chatting and they're quite staunch and they're giving you these stories but, you know, as you get to know them and they trust you a bit more, mm. um, the stories became more, you know, deeper, I guess. I guess having that sort of access to prisoners and starting to learn their stories, you would have probably uncovered some common themes. Was there a common theme with the reasons they were in prison in the first place, or are they all different, the stories? Yeah, the, the common theme was they've all got things in their life that, um, you know, some of them had parents that were in and out of prison and it was just normal for them. So, um, you know, for them, they knew mm. that they'd always end up there. Um, others just, you know, found themselves on that wrong track and the environment they were in didn't help. So, mm. yeah, I think for most of them, it was part of their environment that got them there. You had, um, you, you spoke to a lot of different people too. There was like fraudsters, um, scam artists, there were people that were in there for really <laughs> violent crimes as yeah. well. Was there any moment during the interviews where you ever felt a little bit scared? There was one, one of the people, when I first met him, I thought, you've been in for violence, meth, gang stuff, and I thought, right, this could be interesting. Mm. But, you know, huge big bear hug at the start of the interview, and he was so open and so um, really honest, and it just, it, it was really comfortable from then on, so it's good. What, what do you think, for someone that's never been inside a prison, what do you think are some of the most difficult things that a prisoner has to deal with? I think that it's that I mean, you know you're going to lose your freedom, but it's that not being able to shower on your own and not being able to eat when you want. Um, a lot of them spoke about when they get out, the first thing they do is, like, open the fridge, choose their own food. Wow. Um, go outside and stand on grass. Mm. And it's those little things that I don't think you realise you're, you're going to miss or that, you know, you need in your life. Ring your mum when you want to ring your mum. Absolutely. And have a good gas bag for an hour or so. Yeah. yeah sleep when you want to sleep. You know? It is the small things, isn't it? Yeah. And what about when it comes to, I guess, the, the luxuries that they miss? Because I heard that, you know, when you're talking to Holly before, that a pillow and a, and a blanket is, is some of the luxuries that they miss. What else was it that they miss when they're away? Families? Family's the big one, but again, it's little things. Um, condiments, tomato sauce. Right, okay. You know, something to put on your food so it doesn't just taste like noodles and mints. Mm. Um, you know, being able to choose your own books and you know have that sort of uh, control over your own life yeah I, I was listening to you actually on the radio the other day and some of the callers are calling in and they were saying that you know prison's too easy they've got their own gyms I have to pay money to go to the gym I and mean, what do you have to say to that is prison too easy I think for some people it is easy um, you know I've spoken to one woman who said I had five kids and I went in and all of a sudden I wasn't cleaning and cooking and I was getting cooked for and I could <laughs> sleep and read so I think for some people given what their life's like on the outside, it is probably better. 
Um, but no, it's not easy. It's you know everything's taken from you, and it is a punishment. So that's how it should be. But you're constantly, you know, trying to work out this new environment. You're constantly on your toes, and you don't know who to trust. And it's it's those little things and you know, put that all together, it's quite exhausting, I imagine. We, we hear in the media a lot about, I guess, drugs in prison, gangs in prison, you know, the classic old don't drop the soap lines as well. Is all that true or are they just myths and rumours? I think to a point it's right. true. Um, there's certainly the stories I've heard about how they get the drugs in and, you know, what they do with them and what drugs are getting into prisons is you know, it's fascinating. Um, you know, the weapon side of it, the, the violence, it's all there. Um, not necessarily what you'd see on TV, it's right. not to that degree, <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, I think that, that it all happens. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? A lot of us only, our only sort of area of, of being familiar with prison is through TV. Um, well, no, and that's why we read your book, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly. why we go to find out, find out, really. Um, I want to know, why do the people, the, the people that are in it, have they actually read the book and what was their feedback to you? How do they feel? Um, they have read it and they liked it, so that's good. I'm not in trouble there. <laughs> um, one one of the women got really emotional. She said, you know, I've talked to my kids about doing time and um, leaving them behind, but she said reading it just sort of brought it all back and, you know, her, her children as well have read the parts mm -hmm. and now they understand more. Um, another guy that's in the book actually sort of got a, really emotional, got a bit teary. He said, you know, just looking back at what I put my family through and having that in print in owning it, he said, it, it's huge, so. Okay, what do you want us to take away from it when we read it? I just think a better understanding of what prison's like in New Zealand. We know what it's like overseas, there's documentaries and, you know, oranges and TV black, shows. Absolutely, <laughs> TV shows, but I just think everyone needs to have a bit of a better understanding. And none of the people in the book are asking for sympathy or anything like that. Mm. They're just sharing their stories so that you you know, have a better insight. Fascinating. What it's awesome. really like. Yeah, what a great book. Congratulations. Yeah, a good read. Hey, Anna, thank, thank you. you so much for that. Thank you. Now, Behind, behind Bars, rather, is available now in all good bookstores. <laughs>